The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. It is Monday, October 4th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program by calling the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. White Claw Heart Seltzer. It is made pure. The text line is also open this hour, and we're going to fire that machine up right now. 304-523-2275. 304-523-2275. Now, I was going to recap the loss, but instead I'm, I'm going to leave that to you because the question of the day is what is Marshall going to do to solve the problem? And how we came to that question was as we were having production meeting earlier today, what should we go over? And we all know at this point Marshall got beat by Middle Tennessee by six points, six turnovers, lost by six. Marshall gets beat 34-28. So what are we going to do? to fix the problem if you're Marshall coach Charles Huff. What are you going to do? How do you fix the problem? What are you going to do? And maybe yeah, you can talk about trusting the process, closing the gap, and you can talk about all those things that you're trying to, to build with the culture. But at the same time, what tangible things are going to happen, need to happen, to fix the problem or – is it maybe less of a problem, more of a, okay, the inexperience is showing, the youth is ex- being exploited, Marshall doesn't know how to finish yet, that they're learning a new defense, they're trying to put it all together. What is going on? But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters, as far as fans are concerned, wins and losses. So how are you going to fix the problem? So. If you were the head coach of the Thundering Herd, I'm putting you in charge. You're maybe you're an assistant coach today. You're an associate head coach. You're an assistant coach. You're going to be in the room. You've got five minutes with Coach Huff. What are you going to say to him? Say, Coach, this is what we need to do to fix the problem here. So we'll take your text. We'll also get your phone calls in. I'm kind of curious what you guys have got in store for me on that. Also, later on, we're going to hear from the head coach of the Marshall women's basketball team, Tony Kemper. Had a few minutes to catch up with him earlier this afternoon. He's on the road recruiting, but at the same time, he is um, getting set for the season. He's excited, so we're going to talk to him about what we can expect from the Thundering Herd, what the women got in store for us. So that's coming up as well. And as I need to remind you, we're here at the Union Pub and Grill. Always Monday. When you come to the Union Pub and Grill, it's $1.50 bottles and $2 call shots. It's every Monday. That's the Monday special. Also, you can come down tonight, watch Monday Night Football. It's coming up here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So if you can't actually get down here to the Union to maybe watch the game, you want to watch it, well, we got you covered. We've got it on radio if you can't watch it. But this will be a great place for you to come down tonight and watch Monday night football, and we've got that for you. We go on the air at 7.30 with our coverage right here, again, on ESPN 94.1 and AM 9.30. Okay, so the text machine's now fired up. It's open for you at 304-523-2275. Phone line is yours as well, 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Let me get you started. Every time Marshall plays a team in Conference USA and has a loss, it feels like that someone on that team is going to be named either offensive, defensive, or special teams player of the week. Well, here it is. Week one of conference. I'm going to start charting this. Marshall loses in conference. Marshall opponent gets an award. So Reed Blankenship, we told you about him. That young man is outstanding. And he's he's legitimately the real deal. Well, he took home Defensive Player of the Week, had a huge performance in that game against Marshall, had seven tackles, a forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, one of which he returned 90 yards for a touchdown, by the way, and a pass breakup. He had an outstanding time against the Thundering Herd. Do you not agree? So if you're going to give an award to someone, that guy earned it. And, of course, Marshall assisted in all of Middle's endeavors, turning the ball over six times. We're going to try to break those stats down for you here in a little bit. 
look over once again, maybe where the Thundering Herd could have done better. And the first thing you got to circle is, okay, two interceptions, you don't want that. Turnovers, you don't want that. And you still were in a situation where you could have come back and won the game. You were down by six at one point after everything that happened. So is that a positive or does that add to the disappointment of the loss? And another thing, I'm kind of curious, where are you at at this point? Marshall's five games into this. Game number six is coming up. Marshall has won two games and then lost three straight. Where are you at as a fan base right now? Are you are you still wait and see? Okay, we're going to wait and see how this season goes. We're in this for the long haul. Are you... I'm done. I'll see you when it gets turned around. Are you, are you in that part of the day? Are you somewhere in the middle? Where are you at with this? And I'll throw that out for you as well. And again, the text line is 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. If you have either a an idea of what you need to do to fix the problem. What is going to have to happen? Are you going to have to maybe start some different players? Are you going to bench somebody? Does Grant Wells maybe step aside for a game? Does the band come out? Do you maybe change things up a little bit? Do you have some different players come in on the offensive line? Do you have some different players come in on the de- defensive line? Do you shuffle things around a little bit? Uh, do you stay the course? So all of these things and more are things that you could possibly suggest to the head coach. What is going to be done to fix the problem? So that's our question of the night. And again, one more time before we hit the break, the text line is open for you at 304-523-2275. And, of course, the old-fashioned way, we've got the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Five. So we'll get into all of that. We'll take a look at what happened in Conference USA. Marshall losing uh, among many games that uh, you want to look at and go, okay, that, that was an interesting score to say the least. So we'll run down what happened in Conference USA. We're going to hear from Tony Kemper, get his thoughts on the upcoming season. So looking forward to that. As I mentioned, your phone calls, we've got that. And uh, we're kind of going to look at Old Dominion. It's early. This is the way too early game preview for Saturday. Uh, I have not worked on the defense just yet, but I've been working on other aspects of this game. Uh, so I've, I've kind of identified the players to keep an eye on on the offensive side of the ball, you know, kind of have an idea of what this team looks like, an identity. Uh, we'll talk about that with you a little bit later on as well. Uh, right now, Marshall going down, points per game going down, as Marshall has uh, scored less and less. Marshall scored 49 against Navy, 44 against NC Central, 38 against East Carolina in the loss, 30 against Appalachian State in the loss, 28 against Middle Tennessee in the loss. Going down with the offensive capabilities there, right? You know, you're scoring less. Now, let's be honest. To be fair, I think the Navy and the NC Central game skewed that a little bit. Uh, We're seeing the range here. 28 to 38, maybe. That's the that's the range of what Marshall's offense is capable of doing. Whatever the case may be, Marshall's now averaging 37.8 points per contest. Still not bad at all. So we'll take a look at how Old Dominion matches up with Marshall. We'll hear from Tony Kemper, talk a little women's basketball with you. We'll get your phone calls in, and we'll get your text in. And we'll do that again, 304-523-2275. I'm putting you in charge now. If you are the head coach, what do you do to fix this? What gets done? What gets changed? Or I'm giving you maybe five minutes. I'm going to I'm gonna connect you. I'm going to conference call you in with the coach. You're going to lay it out. What needs to be done to fix this? All that's coming up. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. Looking forward to hearing from you on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. 
We're taking your phone calls this hour on the White Claw phone lines at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line is now open as well, 304-523-2275. That is 304-523-2275. Uh, question of the day. Uh, Marshall's having uh, some problems right now. Three straight losses. The Herd's two and three. What's Marshall going to do to solve the problem? That's our question of the day. What do you think needs to happen? What would you like to have happen? Let's uh, fire up the text machine and see what you have to say. Again, uh, one more time, 304-523-2275 as I refresh the screen. Uh, here's, um, here's one texter. It seems to be something mentally more than physical. If they were predominantly physical issues, then wouldn't Marshall be getting blown out instead of losing games close? Marshall has moments where on offense they look great. Ali runs great and Wells has a few nice passes, and then turnovers will start piling up. Very frustrating. Yeah, turnovers are very frustrating right now for the Thundering Herd. Uh, there are uh, there are ways to win a game, and there are ways not to win in a game. And if you turn the ball over six times and you're in the game by six, that's going to be frustrating at the end of the day. You're looking at the film. I mean, look at the way Marshall and Middle Tennessee were – it just felt like Marshall was going to win that game. And then a turnover would happen. And then it felt like, okay, Marshall's coming back and Marshall's feeling – feeling better and they're, they're going to get past that turnover and then something else would happen. And you got to be frustrated by that. Now, stat keeping was a kind of a, a circus um, on Saturday because of technical problems. Uh, let me tell you right now, uh, hats off to the Middle Tennessee staff for uh, trying to overcome all that. I know what technical problems are. Trust me. Um, Marshall had in that game, if, uh, if I got the right numbers here in front of me, 493 total yards. Uh, Middle Tennessee had 314. Passing yards, 105 for Middle. 209 rushing yards. I mean, that's disappointing in itself because they weren't averaging 80 on the ground. Uh, Marshall, on the other hand, 493 total yards, as we mentioned. 321 in the air. 172 on the ground. But again... If you, you look back at it, Marshall defensively, it was almost like it was just wrapped up for them here. This was a team that was not finding its way on offense, and then all of a sudden they were, and turnovers were a big part of that. And I don't know if that's going to be uh, any better against Old Dominion because you look at Old Dominion just on the surface. Old Dominion is – Averaging 178.6 yards passing. Yards rushing 173.4. So they're pretty balanced. So you can't just target on one because they seem to have a pretty balanced approach. And we'll try to break that down for you a little bit. But I did want to get to Tony Kemper. His media availability was earlier in the day. Not only did he give us time to answer some questions, he was on the road recruiting. So he's all over the place trying to make Marshall women's basketball better. And when talking to Coach earlier this afternoon, you know, I, I kind of wanted him just to maybe set the stage for us, kind of give us a preview of what to expect from his team, and this is what he had to say about his squad. Yeah, so, you know, I think first of all, I think the group that we have has really done a nice job of setting a, a really – good and positive tone. Um, I, I like them a lot. I, I think we move really well. Um, I, I like the work they've done conditioning wise, strength wise to put themselves in position to, you know, be at this point in the season and really getting after it every day in practice. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty quick um, and athletic and, and I do definitely like that. Um, I think it's a very good mix of people that were productive for us a year ago. And then um, we've added some new faces that were, you know, Aaliyah, who you're going to talk to. Um, a lot of people in this area know Aaliyah. Um, she's been very productive up at Xavier for four years. And, uh, you know, we, we get a chance to watch her at home here for her last year. Um, and then uh, Bree Furby, who was a player at Austin P, has come in here. And, and you can tell that um, they – you know, they're both seniors. They've both been through a lot. And, 
you know, so maybe not experience at our place, but they're definitely experienced players. And when you come watch us practice, I think that, that uh, athleticism, I think comes through. And then I just think you hear a lot of voices that um, have, are used to being in a leadership position and, and uh, you know, driving energy. And, and I definitely like that about the group we have. Just uh, as a side note, I have been to a occasional Tony Kemper run practice, and let me tell you, uh, TK gets after it. So whatever uh, whatever you expect to go to a Marshall women's practice, TK gets after it. Um, also, the one of the players that is exciting to watch, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to, is seeing once again uh, Savannah Wheeler on the court. And coach was asked about her and how her offseason went. Well, the, you know, she's been with us for two years now. So COVID year last year, would, I don't, we all, we were talking about that last night in practice. I don't know what to call most of them. Um, we're, we're still you know, not but, sure either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, Sav is a worker. I mean, and, and this area has been blessed to watch her grow up and then we're blessed to get to continue to watch her in college but she she gets after it every day and you don't ever really have to tell her if you put something competitive in front of her she's trying to win and uh you know so she works at it all summer she's nothing different this year from any other year uh there's more experience there um you know i I expect a lot out of her and, and everybody else does too and if you came to our practices you would see it as well um you know i i think the I think the thing she's grown the most in is, is probably not the stuff you guys see, but it's like defense and things like that. Like she's, she's really developed into uh, a complete all around player at her position. And she's so athletic. She's so explosive that, and I don't think people understand that about her. She is a, she is a tremendous athlete in a pretty small frame. And uh, that's how it's one of the reasons why she gets so much done, but I, I think she's poised to continue. Um, to have, you know, the progression that you would expect out of a player that's gotten done what she's gotten done to this point. I think Coach is advocating let's all show up to practice. That's that's the other thing I'm hearing when he was talking about Savannah. Just show up to practice. So we all should just go ahead and get the practice schedule, call over to Marshall, find out when they're practicing. We should just all show up one day. And uh, he – if he says anything, we just say, Coach, you said come come see us in practice. And here we are. We want to see Savannah. We want to see how this team looks. Speaking of how this team looks, one of the questions that Coach Kemper was asked was, who is he looking forward to? When you get out there, who are you looking forward to? Maybe seeing on the court, seeing in practice, getting ready for the season. You know, who excites you going into this season? All of them, honestly. I mean, I think that uh... – we're driving so I'm, I'm with coach Popovich today and we we're just talking about our team and maybe the the uh there's a lot of days where we walk out of there and and our girls are they're tired and they're worn out from getting after each other and, and we have a lot of people that when the ball's on the ground they go hard at that ball and we have a lot of people that are very physical and so I, I you know I I like watching that every day um, it is a different mix usually of people who had, you know, if you go down your list of who had a good day today, it's not always the same three, you, you know? And so I think, you know, I enjoy that about this group. Um, and I also think that that consistency is probably the thing that we're searching for right now is just who I have a pretty good idea of who's going to be consistent, but we're right in the middle of the part of the season where we develop that and who's going to be there every day, who's going to um, defensively compete and do the things we need to do to win offensively, you know, who's got the shot selection stuff figured out and then who does it day after day after day. And I, I like this group's mentality right now. Um, and, and I like the age that they have. So it, it's, you know, Aaliyah Dunham running our team, that, that, that has helped us a lot. You know, move, being able to move Savannah off the ball. So many teams for the last her, the first two years of her career have been able to put their best perimeter defensive player on Savannah and then run, it, run them at her for 94 feet for 40 minutes. And Sav has handled that 
unbelievably well, but those kind of little schematic things are going to become way more difficult for people. And, uh, you know, Kennedy, who you're going to talk to, if you look at Kennedy, the end of the year last year from Kennedy, she was putting up numbers that were as good as anybody in our league inside, you know, almost a double, double, probably average wise in the last four or five games of the year. Also, when you go back and look at who we were playing at the end of the year, it was a lot of the best teams in our league. So it was middle Tennessee. It was rice that she was doing those things on. So, um, you know, I guess what, what excites me about this group is I can talk about a lot of them in a positive light. And, and I think, you know, that depth and that experience, I think is really gives this team a chance to, to take some big steps forward. And finally, our conversation with coach Kemper earlier this afternoon, uh, one of the things I wanted to know about was, you know, the schedule itself. He's playing a couple of big 10 teams. So uh, he has uh, given up a couple of home games, so the Herd can go on the road playing a tournament. Schedule looks like it's going to be quite diverse and challenging, and I asked him about that. You know, it was uh, a little bit stronger than we've seen in the past, and here's his take on that schedule. Maybe we'll get his take on that schedule a little bit later on. I'll tell you what, this is a good time to break. When we continue, we'll follow up with that, and we'll also get your phone calls in 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line, 304-523-2275. we got more coming up. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. Every Monday, the special $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots. We do that every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. More coming up. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. We're coming to you today live from the Union Pub and Grill on this Monday, October 4th edition. Your drive, second half, coming up here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Our phone lines are open for you, 877-420-8255. That gets you on the White Claw phone line. You can also get a White Claw here at the Union Pub and Grill, but I know what you're really going to come after. You're going to get that Southern Bell. Southern Bell, the energy drink, the Red Bull all the secret ingredients and uh, then some in the Southern Bell. That's all here at the Union Pub and Grill. Of course, you got the Monday special, $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots. We do it all day long, all night long, and it's Monday night football as well. So this is the perfect place to be. Text line is open up for you as well, 304-523-2275, 304 Five two three two two seven five. And our question of the day is, what do you do to fix the problem? If you're Coach Huff, you come back home, you've gotten off the bus to get back to Joan C. Edwards Stadium. They've let you off. You you probably didn't go home. You probably went home maybe for you know, a quick change of clothes, a shower. Then you came back. You, you've been starting to look at film. You're, you're starting to break down things in your mind. What, what are you going to do? What is Marshall going to do? What's Coach Huff going to do to solve the problem? Right now, Marshall losing three straight, and you don't want to make that four straight because you got Old Dominion coming in. It's homecoming. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic there. How many fans are going to show up? And now, granted, again, if you decide you want to go to the game, I'm here for you. If you decide you don't want to go to the game, I'm here for you. We'll have the feed for you on the radio side of things. So I'm here for you. But – it's homecoming, so you expect a lot of people to maybe show up, be at Jones C. Edwards Stadium, and maybe some people are coming in that haven't been home for a while. I mean, it's homecoming after all, right? And so what kind of crowd can we expect? Or, or is it going to be a wait-and-see attitude? It doesn't matter if it's homecoming. You know, you might get some people who are going to travel far. This is their one time a year that they maybe come in. They're able to, to get in. They want to come back, see the team. They want to visit the university do the sights, go places, visit Huntington, you know, homecoming. But is that going to make a difference? Will we see a homecoming crowd that's anywhere close to what we've seen attendance-wise? Attendance be just about the same? I mean, or are you going to sit back and you're going to wait? It's like, okay, let's see if Coach Huff fixes the problem here, if he's maybe identified it. I mean, he talked about it, maybe sitting some people down, maybe starting some different people. What's going to happen 
what will his trajectory be as far as what this team looks like on Saturday? Because we've talked about it for several weeks, you know, making mistakes, doing things, uh, mental mistakes especially. We've talked about that, and it hasn't come to fruition just yet. We'll get into more of that here in a minute. Also give you time to get your text in, 304 523 Two two seven five. That is three zero four five two three two two seven five. Uh, before we uh, hit the break, uh, we have one more one more quote from Tony Kemper. Media availability earlier in the day, and Thundering Herd getting ready. The women's team, just like the men, excited to to finally take the court. Hopefully, things are going to be a little bit more normal for them. And we talked about when I talked with him earlier, the toughness of the schedule. And he, he expanded on that a little bit, why the schedule is the way it is and what's he looking to accomplish when he takes his team on the road and through that schedule. Yeah, I think this is the tough, by far the toughest schedule that we've played since I've been the head coach, you know, and it, we've traded some home games for those like neutral games in Las Vegas that Oakland, that was a, I don't exactly know where they finished in the horizon, but, around the top, you know, four or five teams in the horizon last year, I think. And then you you add a team like Wright State, who won the horizon last year. Akron is very talented. They got a tremendous player from Huntington um, that they got from junior college, who's who's a handful. So, yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about the Michigan State and, and the Purdue. I mean, I'm talking about the kind of like opponents on our schedule. And I, I think it we're trying to harden this group, I think, to get them, you know, ready for conference play. Um, Cause at the end of the day that, I mean, I want to start really fast, but it, how we do in conference USA is really how it, you know, how it shakes down for this team. That's the right attitude. You want to win as many of those non-conference games as you possibly can, but at the end of the day, you're coming out of conference USA. And so what do you have to do? You have to win conference USA. You win the regular season, you win the tournament, you have to win Conference USA to further your goals of getting into the NCAA tournament. So that's where he's got his head at right now. Tough schedule, put them through everything we can without destroying them, toughen them up, go into conference, play well in conference, get a shot at winning the conference tournament. So right attitude there. And that's where we're at with Marshall football. you got to bounce back, you have to win – against Old Dominion or you're going to go down two games in the hole the conference standings right now still doable still doable but uh, it's going to be tough Old Dominion Marshall's had lots of success against Old Dominion I was uh, breaking this down a little bit later you know in the day trying to figure out if this is going to be a little bit more of the same. Uh, Marshall's only lost once to Old Dominion. That was back on 2016. It was uh, November 5th, 2016. It was a 38-14 loss in Norfolk. Other than that, Marshall has won every encounter. Of course, last year was the COVID year, so no Old Dominion football. But the last time these two teams met was October 12th of 2019. Marshall won that one 31-17. Old Dominion right now, uh, also in the same boat that Marshall's in. 0-1 in the conference, 1-4 uh, overall, but conference play is where it needs to happen for Old Dominion. Uh, there are three teams in the East Division right now that are 0-1. That's Marshall, FIU, and Old Dominion. The West is doing a little bit better than the East. If you, if you look at the standings, uh, the West is doing a little bit better. Uh, UTSA, UTEP, UAB, Louisiana Tech, Rice, all 1-0 in league play. Southern Miss, North Texas, 0-1 and 0-2. And and uh, then you look at where the losses are coming from. And, of course, um, it's the East Division. I mean, Middle Tennessee is 1-2. and two. Now, FIU lost to FAU. So that's um, – that was, that was East on East crime right there. And, boy, did you look at the score? It was a crime. Uh, running down the scores, what happened on Saturday. Charlotte losing to Illinois 24-14. So uh, Charlotte right now 3-2. and two. you got to feel good about yourself if you're Charlotte, even though you take the loss. Uh, FAU uh, 
uh, beating FIU, as I mentioned. It was brutal, 58-21. Then you've got UTSA beating UNLV 24-17. So you got to feel good about UTSA right now. They're 5-0. and They're the bright spot in the league. They are scoring a lot. They've scored 173 points. They've only given up 88 all season long. you got to feel good. So they're 5-0. and That is their best start. They've tied their best start ever in program history with that win over UNLV. They entered the week receiving votes in the, uh, in the poll. And they are one of just 17 unbeaten teams remaining in the FBS. Their quarterback's pretty good. Frank Harris, he completed 24 of 30 passes for 278 yards, two touchdowns in that game. So UTSA is a bright spot here. You know, UTEP's right behind them at 4-1, and one, and UAB still, you got to watch out for them in conference. They're 3-2 and two overall, but they're 1-0 and oh in the West Division. And don't forget Louisiana Tech. It's a strong division. The West Division's pretty strong right now. And Marshall still has, of course, a shot here. Because Charlotte's just 1-0. Florida Atlantic is 1-0. Western Kentucky hasn't played conference yet. They're out. And um, they're 1-3, but they're they're going to be a challenging 1-3 team when Marshall gets a hold of them. And then Middle bounces back. Now, I don't think Middle's going to storm to the top of the East Division, but before you can before you can get out of the bottom, you got to win a game, and that's what they've done. And then there's Marshall, FIU, and Old Dominion all sitting at 0-1. You don't want to go 0-2 in conference play. You just don't want to do it. And you look at Old Dominion, they're a team that they're averaging almost 26 points a contest. They are pretty balanced passing and rushing. They're allowing 318, almost 319 yards a contest. And they're giving up 179 yards passing. Well, Marshall's thrown on everybody, so we're going to see another one of those games. They've only given up 139.6 yards. Can Marshall fire up the run attack? And that's a big question. They give up 139. Marshall takes 174 and some change on the ground. That's how Marshall is getting its its touchdowns, its offense, its grinding it out. You've got Rashina Ali right now. Forget what he's done with special teams and throwing the ball to him. Just look at what he's been able to do as far as a runner. And I think he would be even more dangerous if we could see him platooned a little bit because I want to see more Knowledge McDaniel. I genuinely want to see Rasheen and Knowledge back and forth a little bit more. But Rasheen right now has carried the ball 82 times. He's got 489 yards. He's got 11 rushing touchdowns. He's also got one receiving touchdown. And, of course, don't forget the special team score. So you're going to see Old Dominion probably key in on him a lot more. But Marshall's offense, it's it's moving the ball. We've seen it, right? I mean, the numbers bear that out. It's gone down a little bit, points per game maybe. Points allowed is um, is a concern as well. Because Marshall's living off those two games as far as what they're able to uh, say is their average, the first two games. But Marshall has uh, – and, and there's one thing we can talk about uh, as far as the scoring is concerned. Uh, Marshall in the second half, the defense – give the defense credit. Held, held them to six. Of course, Marshall in that fourth quarter, the quarter that everyone has pointed to as if Marshall could only finish. Well, Marshall didn't start well, but 14 points in that fourth quarter – with an opportunity. Down six in the final score, 34-28, six turnovers. So there's some things you can point to like, okay, this this can be fixed. And there's some things here that you're thinking, well, you, how do you correct some of this? Because right now, the turnovers are just unbearable. If you're Marshall, the turnover is just unbearable. And that's, I think, a big part of why Marshall's just not able to finish these games. And, of course, the offense is going to have to go out and work more because right now we've seen the defense. The defense is not as stingy as it was last year. Different defense. 
right? Same players, different defense, different schemes, different terminology maybe, different ways of attack here. I mean, I, I'm not going to – I'm not going to say that what they're doing is wrong. It's just we're going to have to see what kind of adjustments that Coach Huff can make now that this team is going through some adversity, some stress. And that's our text question of the day. I'm kind of curious what you think Marshall needs to do. What does Marshall do to fix the problem? That's the question. The text line, 304 523 2275. Uh, Texter writes, next time Marshall should hire Rick Stock still. All he does is beat the herd. And Stock has got the herd's number. Uh, going into that series, Marshall led the all time series 6 to 5. But since joining Conference USA, the Blue Raiders, 5 and 4. 5 and 4 against Marshall. So going into this, it was 6 4 in favor of the herd, 6 5 now. The Blue Raiders, 5-4 and four against Marshall since joining Conference USA. I've got more of your texts coming up. We're going to wrap it up when we continue. Here today at the Union Pub and Grill, I'm your host, Paul Swan, for today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Qualification, equal housing lender, member FDIC. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Just a few minutes to remain for your text. You can join us, 304-523-2275. Texter writes, any Herd fan that thinks the world is ending because we lost Saturday doesn't understand football. We made self-inflicted mistakes. Coach Huff will get it cleaned up by putting the right personnel in the right places, and the Herd will not lose another game for the rest of the season. Oh, that's a bold statement. I'm saving this text. You may call me an idiot, but truth is truth. All right, Texter, appreciate that. Marshall will not lose another game, according to that texter. Texter writes, and he gets an A for the assignment today, fix the run D, clean up the turnovers, and Marshall could be undefeated. So that texter writing in to what Marshall needs to do to fix the problem. And you can get your text in as well, 304-523-2275. That's 304-523-2275. We're here today at the Union Pub and Grill. We're here pretty much every Monday. And on days we can't be here on Monday, we'll move to Wednesdays. But we're here today on Monday. That means the Monday special, $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots. You get that every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. Of course, we've got Monday Night Football coming up. Uh, That is in itself a reason why to come down. We're going to have baseball playoffs beginning tomorrow. They start. So another reason why maybe you want to catch some baseball in the evening or when we get afternoon baseball, you want to come down to the Union Pub and Grill. But Monday is always a great time to come down, again, with $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots. It's every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. And, of course, when you come down to Union Pub and Grill, you got to get a Southern Bell. Unless you're broadcasting on the air, then you go Southern Bell Light. That means I just get the energy drink and skip all the other ingredients. But don't do it that way. Do it the right way. Get the Southern Bell. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to hear from Coach Huff. We're going to find out what Coach Huff has to say as far as what he's going to do or what he is doing to solve the problem, to fix the problem. Marshall taking on Old Dominion. We'll get his first look at Old Dominion as well. Where does he see the Monarchs being a problem? Uh, I like their quarterback, DJ Mack Jr. He has 753 yards. He's 77 of 145. But he's somebody also I like Marshall's defense to get healthy on. He's got four touchdowns and five interceptions on the season. They've got a pretty good tight end, uh, uh, Zach Kuntz. 24 receptions, 239 yards. He's got a couple of touchdowns as well. He's averaging almost uh, 10 a game carry. So that's pretty good. Rushing uh, Elijah Davis is uh, going to be the guy you got to stop there. But honestly, they've got two really good running backs. Elijah Davis, uh, he's got 45 carries for 279 yards, two touchdowns. He's averaging 6.20 yards Jean-Luc Peeker, 
he's their other running back that uh, stood out to me. 33 carries, 184 yards, and he's got a touchdown as well. So, you know, there's going to be some places where you look at this team and you think, okay, you know, they've got a pretty good tight end. And actually, yeah, Isaiah Spencer, Koontz has uh, got the yardage and the touchdowns, but Isaiah Spencer, nine receptions, 79 yards, and he's got two touchdowns as well. So, yeah, there are a couple of tight ends you got to worry about there, and uh, their wide receivers are are pretty good. Yeah, you know, if you look at Marshall's wide receivers, a little bit more prolific, but the tight ends look like they're going to be hard to deal with, and rushing looks like it's going to be. Yeah, you know, again, I think this is probably going to be a better rushing team that we saw with uh, with Middle. And with all that said and done, we are out of here. Back tomorrow, we'll be back in studio. We'll hear from Coach Huff. We'll get your calls and your texts. And we appreciate everyone who was uh, with us today here. Don't forget the Union Pub and Grill Monday special. $1.50 bottles, $2 call shots. You get that every Monday here at the Union Pub and Grill. Back tomorrow to do it all over again. Until then, have a great night, everyone.